start recording. Hi, guys. Welcome to the sneak peek for That Coach Life. I'm Brittany. I'm Emily. I'm, I'm Kayla. <laughs> wax on, wax I'm off. I'm so excited you're here. <laughs> We're so excited to have you guys here. It's really, so we've been like planning this <laughs> and I feel like it finally happens and we're like, it's happening. Yeah. It's crazy. It's been so fun already. And we're just starting. Yeah. And this is like your guys' first taste of us. <laughs> 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 I feel like we all like vibe really high with each other too. So you guys are, you guys are going to leave this call just as pumped as we are. So, <laughs> um, I didn't want to tell you guys real quick. <laughs> this should only take like 45 minutes or so. Um, we're just mostly here to share our stories tonight. We think that, you know, who we are as coaches is completely centered around our story and what led us here and kind of our journey with it so far. So we'll share our stories. Um, and then tomorrow we'll post more on the, you know, the other details, you know, how we make money, what's going to happen when you sign up, how do you sign up? Um, all of that will cover objections, you know, common objections in here. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the group or post them in the chat. Um, and we'll get to them if we have extra time tonight. If not, we can do like an FAQ tomorrow, but we're so, so, so excited to have you guys here. And who wants to go first? I will. <laughs> Not all at once, guys. You won't go all at once. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Emma. Um, what happens you, when you have ghouls that are supporting their, each other? They're like, I don't want to go first. You go. It's okay. I want to hear your story. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thanks. Let's, do, let's have Emily go because she's been a coach out of the three of us the longest. Yes. Okay. I'm going. Hi, guys. Um, I'm literally setting a timer on my phone because I have been a coach for five years and I have a tendency to talk a lot when I get passionate. So, um, I'm setting a timer for myself so I can kind of make sure that I'm not rambling and staying on course. Um, I'm Emily Morick. Uh, as I said earlier, I am a mama to two little boys, Raphael and Matan, live in Eugene, Oregon, happily married, all that good stuff. Um, but I found coaching back, or I started coaching back in 2013. Um, I was a new mama to my first, my first boy, and um, I was, I gained 45 pounds in that pregnancy. And uh, when it came time to lose the weight, I started doing what I was used to, which was going to the gym, pedaling my life away on the elliptical, taking every class available, working out an hour to two hours a day, six days a week, literally killing myself and not seeing the results I was wanting to. Um, I did lose some weight, but I still did not feel strong. I was depleted because I was over-exercising and I was also under eating throughout the day, eating super boring, really had a diet mentality and just an unhealthy, like I just felt so uncomfortable in my skin. I just truly had no real self-love and felt like I wasn't worthy of loving myself um, really until I reached a certain goal weight. And um, I was just tired of it. And so one day I was scrolling social media and I found my now coach, um, didn't know her from Adam, complete stranger. And it was not like me to even follow any sort of fitness types on social media because I didn't want someone to tell me that in order to lose the rest of the weight, I was going to have to restrict even more and had never have any fun and never have a cookie and never have a margarita. And I just couldn't get down with that. And I was like, no, thank you. But this girl was so different because she lived this very healthy, balanced life, um, a very healthy lifestyle. She was working out 30 minutes a day in her house and getting results and loving herself and preaching self-love and, um, you know, still enjoying the weekends and a cookie and a margarita and all the things with her husband. And I was like, what is she doing? I need this in my life. Like I could tell that she had joy and a really healthy, holistic balance. And I was so craving that I was sleep deprived, um, as a mom and yeah. like up all night with my son and all the things. And it was just like, I need this, I need a change. And so, um, being me though, I'm super introverted, super skeptical, super scared to reach out. Um, 
I never posted on social media. I never liked anything on social media or commented. I was literally the silent watcher. So I watched her for months and months before I finally realized I'm sick and tired of sick and, being sick and tired and I have to at least try. My husband, honestly, he was the one that finally looked at me and said, look, you keep talking about this, <laughs> you might as well try it. <laughs> you have nothing to lose. And so I did, I finally got up the courage. I reached out to her. Um, I joined my first boot camp two weeks into that first program. I was working out 25 minutes a day versus two hours a day, and I was already seeing results. I was drinking a superfood shake called Shakeology that changed my freaking life every single day. And four days in, I looked at my husband. I remember where I was in the kitchen, and I was like, I feel like a new mommy. I have energy again. I genuinely felt mentally better. It was the craziest thing, but when you put good nutrition in your body, when your body's been depleted, it is like... Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. I feel normal again. And I was just so, like, I just got hooked. I was like, I love this community. I love these workouts. I love this nutrition. And I wasn't even following a nutrition plan at the time. I was simply just adding in Shakeology and creating a healthier relationship with food. Um, and so uh, I, you know, after that first boot camp, I was like, I found out that you could actually be a coach and help other people feel this amazing. And bonus, get 25% discount, which was definitely needed at that time in our lives. And bonus, I could help make an impact in our family's life. Um, and I was like, yes, please sign me up. I, I have to do this. And, um, you know, to be honest, like I said, it took me a long time to reach out to her. And it did take a lot for me to decide to become a coach because a huge limiting belief I had was a massive fear of being an introvert probably, but a massive fear of what other people were gonna think of their opinions. That was really in my head and really what stopped me from initially becoming a coach. Um, and I just kept thinking, what are they gonna think of me? What are the old, like the, my uh, old coworkers gonna think or friends and family or strangers on Facebook that I don't even talk to anymore? Um, you know, like what are they gonna say? And I finally got to the point where it was like, they're not living my life. Nothing that they can do or can't do is actually going to make me happy or not. I'm in control of my present and my future. Um, they're not paying my bills. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I just, I heard my coach say one time, a comfort zone is nice, but nothing grows there. Everything amazing and spectacular in life, when you really think about it, it comes outside of your comfort zone. It comes from doing something that gives you butterflies that you get excited about. And, um, and so I just went for it. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm in. And I started in September of 2013. I didn't even have a computer then, so I didn't really even start until October. Didn't have any idea what I was doing. We did not have um, the trainings that we do now at all our team was like a team of two <laughs> so what we have now is so magnificent and we're going to talk to you more about that but we have we just didn't have any of that so it was really just like trying to figure it out on my own i had my coach which was awesome and just like no idea what i was doing no idea what i was doing posting on social media but i just knew I was passionate about this. I knew I was in the right place because it was changing how I felt. And I knew that I was not alone in that. I knew it could help change someone else's lives. And I was so excited about being able to make an impact. And so um, I started my first online boot camp and um, helped a few friends. Uh, I remember I earned my first paycheck paycheck, which was like $40. And you better believe I celebrated it like it was 40,000 because at the time, we were living off of one income. This is something I failed to mention. But um, when I got pregnant with my second son, I worked all the way up until delivery. And then um, we decided we were going to do everything we could to keep me home, which was literally just scraping by. We downsized heavily. Um, we went down to one car, the smallest place, the smallest amount of bills, and still were barely like penny pinching, so stressed to go to the grocery store oh my gosh, what if we get an extra bill this month? How are we going to pay it? That kind of stress where you're always fighting with your spouse and you want to throw up about finances. And that was just like, I didn't want to stay there. Um, so when I heard that first $40 paycheck, it was like, oh my gosh, I went from making $0 as a stay-at-home mama to being able to help people. And I earned that money because it was a direct reflect reflection of 
someone else's life being changed. Um, and so I just continued to grow from there and host an online accountability group each month. And um, in the beginning of 2014, I found out I was pregnant with baby number two. And that was like, I am like, okay, I'm going to run. I'm going all in with my coaching business. And then I found out I was pregnant and I was so scared that it meant that I wasn't going to be able to build my business. And, um, I was so scared that no one was going to be inspired by me as I'm like gaining weight and I'm so sick and all the things. And my coach said, just do what you can do your best and share your journey authentically. And so that is what I did. And I am so thankful that I was a coach through that pregnancy because it was a completely different experience than my first. This time around, I had workouts I could do from home. I had a nutritional shake that helped the nausea and helped me feel strong um, and helped my milk supply after he was born. And I had this incredible community supporting me and pushing me. And there is no way I would have worked out until 41 weeks pregnant had it not been for this community right here. Um, and so I just was on fire and our team grew, my business grew, it was changing other people's lives, it was changing mine, it was changing my families, and um, things just continued to grow from there. Um, and then, you know, life happens. There's been a lot of life that has happened over the last five years, and um, through it all, coaching has been such a gift, because I have lost, um, I've watched my parents go through a divorce, I've lost um, several loved ones. Um, I've gone through depression. I, um, have just, I've gone through a uh, miscarriage, like just so many life things that it's normal. It's normal life for people. And coaching has been this one light that has given me strength, that has given me an anchor, that has given me hope. It has given me, it's been like a beacon of light in the darkness that I've been able to lean into. And I am telling you, <laughs> I am not the person I was five years ago. I'm the same person in that I believe this girl was inside, but she was trapped. <laughs> and this, the girl you see now, I just need you to know, there is no freaking way five years ago I would have even showed up for this call just as a guest. So give yourself a huge pat on the back for even being here because that's brave and that's strong to even be on this call and even in this group I was a wallflower that would like, I would have shied away from that. So y'all are way far, ahead, way farther ahead than I was. And, um, I am no one special. This gift is just that amazing. And if you take it as the gift that it is and you lean in and you work hard and you lean on your sisterhood and you trust the process, oh my gosh, your life will be changed. And I am not just blowing smoke. There is nothing about my life that is even remotely the same. My marriage is so much stronger and there are so many things I don't even know if we would have made it through if it weren't for coaching. Um, I am such a much better mother and daughter and sister and friend and now I have this passion and this platform to be able to give back, to be able to help other women and help change other women's lives and make friendships with people in the UK, in Canada, and all over the US that I never would have met otherwise. I was this stay-at-home mama that was so isolated and so alone and so scared of the future. And you guys, this gift gave me power. It gave me power to change my present and my future and my destiny. And that is why you are here tonight. It is no accident that you are here. And I am just so freaking thankful for every single one of you being here on the call, watching the recording, taking the time, because it is just, it is the most life-changing gift. And I came in under 15 minutes and I'm going to stop. <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs> I posted in the comments. I was like, great, I'm already crying. <laughs> For anyone who's new to the show, I'm a little emotional. <laughs> I started tearing up too. So. <laughs> oh my gosh. You're so inspiring. I mean, you're just like one of my favorite people. I just. You're so sweet. I love it. I love it. Thanks. So, Kate, do you want to go next since you're second longest coach? Sure. I'm like, I don't even know how to like go after that. <laughs> um, okay. So I, I, I'm also an emotional person too. Um, so hopefully like emotions don't come out like they did in my last sneak peek. So bear with me here. 
But um, I am Kayla Sykes. I, gosh, I've been coaching since it'll be, it was two years in March. Um, I kind of have a similar story to Emily as far as, you know, following our coach for so long and not reaching out and all of that. But I want to kind of go back to where I started because I know a lot of you um, that do, that are watching this and do know me personally, you've known me for, for maybe the last few years, just, you know, whatever. But um, I haven't always been the way I, I've been, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And I always say, you know, sometimes when you walk in on someone's chapter 21, you, it's, it's easy to not, you know, see anything else. And so I want to share more about what, you know, coaching has done for me personally. So real quick, um, I, let's see, I used to, I guess it was, I was 18. Um, I met my boyfriend, now husband, um, and he was big on going to the gym and, you know, things like that. I was like, well, I'm going to start going to the gym too. I'm going to like hang out on this treadmill and just get my, my walk on, you know? And, and like, I didn't know what the heck I was doing, but I really enjoyed it. I like the endorphins it gave me. Um, and I just, I loved it. And so I did, you know, I've, I've started doing more things at the gym and this and that. And then around, uh, I guess I was 20 years old. Um, I, I learned about these diet pills that, um, a friend of mine was taking and I really have not shared this very much. So here we go. But I learned about these diet pills someone was taking and she had lost weight so quick. And at that point, I mean, think about all of us. I don't know how old all of you are, but when you're 20 years old and you feel you're heavy, um, cause I, I, I was heavy set back then. Um, cause I would eat all the time, like, you know, like crazy, but I was like, I've got to do something. I've got to do something quick. You know, I want it to drop and be done. And did I lose weight? Yeah, I lost weight, but it was unhealthy. I literally would starve myself, like under eat, like Emily was saying, I would go to the gym after work, after being on my feet all day, I would work, I would go to the gym, and eat maybe once during the day. And that's not like me. Like I like my food. Okay. And so I had dropped so much weight and it was great. And, you know, I was like, yeah, I'm finally where I'm finally happy. And Y'all, I wasn't happy. I wasn't like this state of euphoria where I was just like, yeah, like life's changed, you know? No, it, it didn't. I, I got into a smaller size of jeans. Like, you know, nothing really changed within me. Um, and so <clears throat> moving on to uh, Joey and I ended up getting, um, that's my husband, got engaged a few years later and, and I was prepping for the wedding. And so again, I was like this cardio queen. I didn't really do a whole lot of like weights and stuff like that. I thought that made you bulky and, um, I was wrong, <laughs> but, uh, my sister-in-law at the time was a personal trainer. And so I had her, she was training me, um, about four months out from my wedding. And with her, she was very restrictive on what she ate, like super clean, very perfect with her eating and working out. And that's what I was trying to duplicate. So I lost like 13 inches for my wedding, you know, all this jazz and cool, whatever. But a month after I got back from like our honeymoon and stuff at work, they're really big on potlucks there. And so they had a potluck and I had not had a cookie or sweets in like six months. And I had my first cookie and that cookie turned into six. And that is the moment I will never forget it that I knew I cannot deprive myself. Like this just does not work. Um, and so I just, I had this terrible relationship with food is what I'm getting at. Um, and so I gained all the weight back that I lost, you know, I was such a yo-yo dieter. Like it was just ridiculous. And so around 2014 is when I was like, okay, you know, Joey and I had been married for a little while. We were, you know, ready to start trying to have a family. And I was like, well, you know, I'm going to try to get healthy. And I was looking at my sister-in-law who was a personal trainer. She got pregnant. She gained a bunch of weight. She like, it was hard for her to get it off. And I was like, oh my God, if she can't do it, I have no hope. I can't do this. And so I was like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to be proactive. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and jump into it and whatever. And I found, um, my trainer, I had a trainer. I went, you know, I went and saw her, I started seeing some changes. She had a boot camp class. So I went to her boot camp class and I absolutely loved it because it was community. I love, I love cheerleaders, you know, people supporting you and just, you know, lifting up your spirits and stuff. And so it was like a little hangout I had with friends at 5 a.m., weirdo over here. I like to work out in the mornings, but, um, so I did that for a little bit and I saw great results and I just loved it. I just was obsessed, but I still found myself competing in, um, in my mind against other people during class because there'd be other people older than me, like doing better push-ups or, 
you know, going faster with running. I'm not a runner. And so I would just like literally compare myself to them in my mind, but I still loved the boot camp classes. I loved it. I have some of my best friends from there. But, um, so in the beginning of 2015, I learned that I was pregnant and, um, let's say, yeah, I was pregnant and we were like, yeah, this is great. But, um, two weeks at my first appointment, I learned that I had a miscarriage and guys, it really, like, I was one of, I don't know. I don't know if this is weird, but I didn't feel it. Um, I didn't, it was kind of surreal because I didn't, I just learned I was pregnant recent, you know, two weeks prior. And I was like, well, you know, I, okay, I lost it, you know, whatever. And, um, it's definitely not a light subject, but, um, my husband and I were in the process of building a home and um, trying to find a place to live because we sold our house so quickly, which, which was great. But it was like, we're trying to find this temporary place to live while we built our home. And it was just a lot of stress. And so I was just like, you know what? It wasn't meant to be. So that was January of 2015. Um, continued working out and all of that. But then I learned at my follow-up appointment that my body didn't do what it was meant to do. <laughs> And I'm so sorry. I'm not going to do this again. <laughs> Didn't do what it was meant to do. And I had to, you know, have a, a procedure done, which is, you know, fine. But I think that hit me because it was like, I've got this, this thing <laughs> just holding on, you know, it's like, didn't want to leave me. And so I was just like, okay, this is really happening. And so that year I um, ended up, you know, kind of gaining the weight back. I was still going to boot camp classes and still doing all that, but I just wasn't honed in on nutrition or anything like that. And so, um, <laughs> fast forward to January of 2016, a year to the date, I learned that I was not only pregnant, but pregnant with twins. And I, um, firmly believe that was like God's way of saying, Hey, here's your chance at having, you know, your first child back. And so I have twins. Um, and <laughs> woo, they are a mess. <clears throat> but, um, so I didn't work out for the longest time because I dealt with like morning sickness, actually all day sickness if we're real. And, um, you know, around the second semester, or second semester, second trimester, I started working out again. And I worked out for about up until I was like 30 weeks and then, you know, stopped or whatever and had the boys at 36 weeks and all of that. And, um, so at my six week release appointment for my doctor, she was like, okay, well you can go back to working out. And I was like, okay, that night went back to the boot camp class, <laughs> started working out again because I was so determined to not let myself go as, as they say that a lot of moms do. And it's nothing against any of you. If, if you're, if you're going through that right now and you're just, you know, you're not focused too much on yourself, it's okay. It's, it's kind of what we're taught to do in a sense. And so um, I was determined not to let that happen. I love how I feel when I work out and I love just being active in a sense. And so I, I, I lived it up when I was on my maternity leave. I had three months maternity leave. I got to go to classes, you know, cause then my mom would watch the kids or I could take the kids to my boot camp class and all was well. But when I went back to work guys, like I was like, well, I can't go to my 5am class anymore because my husband goes to work so early and she only held certain evening classes. And so that was like once or twice a week, but I still wasn't getting home to like seven or seven 30. And I'm like, these kids are going to bed at that time. Like I'm already away from them at work. I work full time. I don't know if I mentioned that, but I do. I work, I'm an eight to fiver. And, um, I was like, well, this isn't going to work anymore, you know? And, and I applaud the women that do still make the time and, and go, but it just doesn't work with me and my family's setup. So I've been following our coach, Ashley, for like a year. And honestly, y'all, what really um, attracted me to her is she still, she worked out, but she still loved to have a good time. Um, she, she liked, I like, I like alcohol. Okay. I'm just going to say that. I love beer, love an ice cold beer. Um, cheers. Um, but something hit me about her. I was like, oh my God, like she's still seeing results. She's still living her life. She's not restricting. I know I cannot restrict myself to see results. And so I was like, okay, I'm like one of the only people that probably reached out to her out of the three of us. Well, maybe y'all, maybe y'all did eventually, but anyways, I was like, I'm going to do it, but I did it differently. I actually wanted to work this business because when I was back in my boot camp classes, I was always like the, the, the cheerleader of the bunch. I would like, 
if someone was, you know, running slower, I would run, go back and run the rest of the mile with them or whatever. Like, I just love helping people. I have such a passion for helping and growing other people that it was just like, no, I want to do this as a business. <laughs> like, let's do it along with my full-time job. Like, let's do it. You know, let's see what happens. But, um, I was, I'm not your, your ideal boot camp accountability group candidate. I did not participate. <laughs> and so I was just like, well, I just want to do this myself. Like I want to start running my own groups and all of that. And so here I am two years later, um, 2018 was the first full year I actually coached. It was my biggest, craziest year. Um, 2019 is going to be better. I know, but, um, 2018, I really, at the beginning in January, I was like, okay, I am just going to rip off the bandaid and go for it. I had earned an invitation to it, the trip. If y'all saw, I was on a cruise with Brittany. Um, I'd earned that invitation. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to earn this trip. I'm going to do it. And so January, I just ran. I ran with it. I was so much more open with my journey, shared more about it because that actually like sharing the realness kind of helps like me in a sense, like just feel better about it all. And so I'm like, if I can help someone else just by being vulnerable, so be it. Like that's selfish of me not to, you know? And so, um, yeah, so I did that and I just absolutely have developed this belief in myself. I know that sounds so cliche, but guys, like coming from someone who never believed, like I would never take a challenge when someone would be like, Hey, why don't you try this out? It's something totally new. I'd be like, no, uh, -uh not at all. <laughs> and now I'm just like, no, bring it on. What you got? Like, let's do it. You know? And it's just like this, this coaching thing is so much more than just working out. Um, you're constantly surrounded by amazing women that are on your side. Like that's a big deal. Um, and so, and I, I always like to say it's like a constant girls night out because we're always like together doing these calls, trainings. Um, and we're just, you're never alone in this business. And so I would, I'm going to wrap this up with just saying that my um, biggest takeaway or my objection in the beginning was of course, like Emily's, you know, worrying about what others thought, because I lived that, like I was such a people pleaser. I was so worried what people were going to think because this is such not the norm. Um, and you know, my best friend was actually a personal or still is a personal trainer at the gym I was going to. So I was like, Oh my God, I don't want her to think that like, I'm going to take people or I'm better than that or whatever. And, or look at me like, Oh, you're not certified, you know? So, but time, time is my issue. Um, I am an extrovert. I'm, but I was telling someone the other day, I was like, there are more coaches that are introverts than extroverts I've learned. Um, and so don't, these two right here. And so don't think that you have to be like this, wow, oh, in your face, because you don't have to, you just have to be you. And I've learned that, that being me is what makes this business successful. Like I get to be me and I get to draw like all of you in and like get to hang out with you and, and lead you and, and, you know, show you your potential. And it's just amazing. I'm going to like stop, but again, time. <laughs> so I work this out as a part-time business um, currently. And so at night I will, I do these things after the kiddos go to bed, I'll wake up in the morning and get my workout in sometimes while I'm sipping my pre-workout, which if you haven't had our pre-workout is life. Um, but I'll sip the pre-workout and do some work and things like that. And so I just make it work. And I have had a lot of little business meetings with my coaches on my lunch breaks here lately at work. Like I just do it when I can, it's called power pockets. Um, and so I'm still here after two years and, and working this business alongside with my full-time job. So you can't say you don't have time because it's not that you don't have the time. It's that you may not be making the time. And, um, I choose to make the time. It makes me happy. And these are my, my happy people and places. And, um, I just love it. So there you go. <laughs> Gosh, you're so inspiring. <laughs> Mike. And I just, for I'm those not to guys that don't know, I, I, I talked to Kayla sun up to sundown seven days a week. We're like, but I just, I cry every time. <laughs> it kills me. <laughs> it kills me. And I love you. And I'm obsessed with you. So. Back at ya. <sighs> so, <laughs> I guess, ooh, I guess it's my turn. Um, yeah. 
<sighs> Here we go. All right. So um, my name's Brittany. You guys probably know that by now. Um, I am 25, almost 26, I think. Yeah, almost 26. <laughs> Do the math there. Um, I live in the beautiful Lexington, Kentucky. I love it here. Um, I grew up in the Midwest, actually. I lived in Idaho and Utah and all that um, until I was like 13. So um, my story starts a little bit earlier than some of the other coaches like Emily and Kayla. And um, we're going to kick it all the way back to when I was 12 years old. And hindsight's always 2020 because I didn't realize this until I started to uh, dive into me and dive into my story, but that's actually when I started to develop signs of depression and binge eating disorder. Um, <clears throat> and so that's something I struggled with. Um, you know, with the binge eating disorder, it's pretty, you know, self explanatory. It's kind of like uh, bulimia, but without purging. Um, so it's just lots and lots of, you know, like binging and there's like different triggers and stuff. And it's a pretty newly recognized eating disorder, but that's what I had and um, definitely developed signs of depression. I was a pretty heavy set child. Um, the first time I remember, <clears throat> excuse me, realizing that I was like heavier than all the other kids was actually like my fifth grade class pictures. Um, and we would go skiing and like when you're skiing, they have an ID card and they ask for your like your weight on there, which now in hindsight, I'm like, why the hell are they asking kids this? Anyways, and I knew what my weight was and I lied about it. And my best friend that was standing next to me was like, you weigh that much? He's a fifth grader. He's a kid. He wasn't a total jerk. He didn't know he was being a jerk. But <laughs> um, anyway, so that's when I like started to really realize I had a weight issue. Um, I was heavy all throughout middle school, all throughout high school. Um, when I was in ninth grade, I was 13, almost 14, and I was going through tremendously horrible, a little bit TMI, um, like menstruation, and I was just like bleeding for months and months at a time, and I couldn't figure out what was going on, and I finally told my mom about it um, because I thought something was wrong with me. And so I didn't want to tell anybody because I didn't want anything to be wrong. Um, we went to a doctor. I found out that I had PCOS and insulin resistance and um, hypothyroidism. So in layman's terms, my body just really doesn't, um, doesn't process things the way that it should. It holds on to damn near everything I put in it. <laughs> and um, it makes it really hard to lose weight. It's not impossible, but it's very hard. There's other issues with it, but that's what I was struggling with at that time. I wasn't worried about infertility or anything like that. So hopefully that's not on the horizon for me, but if it is, then I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. So um, when I was in high school, I was, starting to see a personal trainer. Um, I was actually doing it with my mom. She had, you know, struggled with weight for a while too. She dropped like a hundred pounds. It was incredible, like so inspiring. And I was showing up every day, but I would like lose a little bit of weight and then gain a lot of weight. And it was because I was binging behind the scenes. Like nobody, my mom never knew. My dad never knew. I was very good at hiding it. Um, I was trying different, you know, pills and wraps and shakes and, you know, all of this stuff. Like my parents, they had Nutrisystem at one point. And I remember, I mean, this was before I even moved here, which was in eighth grade. So in seventh grade, I was eating some of my parents' Nutrisystem meals <laughs> to help me lose weight. Like that's where I was. Um, <clears throat> so I went through most of my high school, you know, depressed. Um, I had a little bout of like suicide thoughts. It was actually related, I believe, to the medication that I was on. So I started to take a more um, holistic approach to my PCOS and my thyroid issues and um, went from there. So I graduated high school and I was going to pursue my lifelong dream of becoming a nurse. Um, I've always wanted to be a you know, a nurse and specialize in pediatric oncology because like, I just, I love to give back and I love kids. Um, and that was the plan since like sixth grade. So I got accepted to University of Louisville and I went down there and I spiraled. I mean, my life, I just like, I went insane and it wasn't with partying. 
it wasn't with drinking. It was my binge eating and my depression. I mean, I flew off the fricking rails and I lived with a stranger who like, she would have never known to like look for any signs or anything. And, um, I remember her at one point in the spring asking me if I was okay. And I knew that I had gained so much weight. I had gained like three pant sizes. I know it was easily like 60 pounds that I had put on, um, from fall semester to spring semester. And I knew that something was wrong. And I told my mom, I was like, I need to come home. Like I need to go to school in Lexington. I can't be away. I need to figure this out. Um, so I came home, I, my transfer process ended up getting kind of messed up. And so I ended up working full time. My family owns a local like recreational youth sports facility, um, which is mostly gymnastics it's a ninja and fun stuff like that. But I ended up doing that full time. And I realized that I loved business. Um, I love business. It set my soul on fire. And I decided that it was a blessing in disguise that my transfer process got messed up. I was doing something that I loved. So, you know, started working full time, going through the motions. Um, definitely not dealing with anything that was kind of going on in my head, still binging and all of that. Um, and it got to a point, I, this was like 2013 and my mom just loves me to pieces. And she reached out to me to see if I was going to be open to seeing my personal trainer again, because she really wanted me to stick around for a long time. Dang it. <laughs> I knew this was going to start. So, um, I agreed to see the personal trainer again. This ended up being, um, something that I took on financially. I definitely didn't have like five or $600 a month, but I was coming up with it because I was paying for it and I was seeing him twice a week and he was giving me nutrition plans and stuff. But I, once again, I was never addressing what was going on in my head. So nothing could ever get fixed. I mean, I would lose weight and gain weight, lose weight and gain weight. He had no idea why, because I was not going to tell him about the binging. At this point, this was the same personal trainer that I saw in high school. I mean, he is a dear, dear family friend of mine. And like hell, if I'm not telling my parents about this, I'm not telling him. And so I ended up um, kind of falling off the wagon with that. Um, December, that was, you know, a course of almost three years that I saw him. So we're at 2016 at this point. And I was supposed to be in my best friend at the time. We had been friends for seven years. Um, my whole circle of friends. I was supposed to be in her wedding. And I hated myself so much that I keep looking at a timer. <laughs> I hated myself so much. Um, I, I could not bear to be part of her wedding. I wanted to be there. I wanted to celebrate them and their love. I could not do it. Um, and our relationship or friendship had been a little bit on the rocks. Um, we just weren't talking as much as we were before, probably because I was crawling into this, you know, rock that I had made myself. It was my happy place because nobody could touch me there. Um, anyway, so I ended up reaching out to her and, um, she wasn't answering my call. So I had to send it over text and I was like, Hey, you know, I can't be in the wedding. I'm really sorry. I want to celebrate you and Andrew. Um, you know, and all this stuff, and I really laid my heart on my sleeve and it was the first time that I had ever told somebody that I had, um, a problem that I needed to work on with myself, I needed to like dive into why I was feeling the way that I was. And she never responded to me. <laughs> and I found out that she got my message because all of my friends started asking me why I was going to be at the wedding. Long story short, my entire friend circle abandoned me. I had no friends. I had my sister, I had my now brother-in-law and I had my mom and my dad. So, um, Cue the vicious cycle <laughs> again. Now we're at the, you know, the beginning of 2017. I was like, you know what? I don't need those friends. I'm going to dive into me and I'm going to take care of myself. I've always loved working out. Um, just the problem was the eating. And so Planet Fitness was doing their, you know, special like dollar down, $10 a month kind of thing. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do this. And I'm not going to tell anybody that I'm joining the gym. I'm just going to look amazing. And then they'll ask, <laughs> but I didn't want accountability. I didn't want people to know. I didn't want people to be like, so did you go to the gym today? So I go and it's my first day and you have all those like in the gym thoughts where you're like, are they looking at me? Are they laughing at me? And you're like, no, they're not. So I, I get on a treadmill and in the corner of my eyes, I see these like two guys. Cause I picked the furthest treadmill from anybody with a beating heart in that gym. 
and um, I hear them laughing. <laughs> if Brittany is not you, you're being over dramatic. You need to chill out. Um, and then they started to moo at me like a cow. And I realized that they were laughing at me and talking about me. Um, I grabbed all of my stuff. I haul ass out of there and I never went back. <laughs> and that was one of the worst experiences of my life. Um, and at that point I realized again afterwards, because just other people's opinions were eating at me. I allowed other people's opinions to eat at me. Um, I was suicidal. I had it all planned out. Um, I was in the process of paying off my debts. I was in the process of bringing sneaking boxes. I still live at my parents' house, sneaking boxes into my parents' house so I could pack up all my stuff so that after I died, they could just like do whatever they wanted with the boxes, but they wouldn't have to go through my stuff and they wouldn't have to worry about any money and I would just be dead and all would be well because Brittany isn't around to worry about anymore. Um, in the process of this though, I found a girl on Instagram and, or on Facebook actually at that point, and she did these videos called Friday Faves. If you know me, you know that I love makeup. You know, I love, um, all this beauty stuff. I drop like $200 at Ulta, but you know, complain about like the cost of a charger, like, you know, I don't know. So, um, I, I love the beauty stuff. So she would talk about that every Friday. And I had no idea that at the time these Friday Faves videos were what was keeping me on another week. And she would drop, you know, some inspiration. This girl, she had such a zest for life. And I was like, gosh, that's so amazing. I wish I could have that. I'm obviously not made for it because hello. Um, but that'd be really cool. So um, that ended up being my now coach, Ashley Molstad. Um, I got to, that was the beginning of 2017, August 2017. I reached out to my mom. We were a year out from my sister and my brother-in-law's wedding. And quite frankly, I didn't want to present the way that I looked in their wedding photos, uh, which might sound really vain, but it ended up being my motivating factor. <laughs> um, and she said, well, what about that girl that works out at home? You watch her videos all the time. And I was like, <laughs> if I work out at home, I'm going to, what would keep me motivated? Like what would keep me showing up? found out that this girl had like a little online community and I was like, okay, but I don't want any accountability. So I'll join into it just so I can like hang out with Ashley. Um, I'm not, I'm never going to post. <laughs> I'm definitely never going to coach join, signed up for the discount. Um, I ended up, you know, starting to go to therapy, which was much needed. I was diagnosed with depression and I was able to get the tools to address that and my binge eating disorder and ugh, just a, uh, life was definitely moving up. Um, I ended up, you know, losing 14 pounds and 14 inches with my first 21 day program, which for anybody is like amazing. But with PCOS, I was like, Oh my God, this actually works. Like I tried everything and it maybe work worked a little bit, but it wasn't sustainable. My triggers include, you know, um, being deprived of everything or not having carbs or anything like I could have all my stuff. I was just, I wasn't looking at food as the enemy anymore. I was just eating when I wanted to eat and in the right portions and, you know, taking care of myself and giving myself some brain food. So, um, I was a little up and down with it, not super committed at first. Um, and then I got to the new year and this new program was coming out and it was called 80 day obsession. And I was like, that's rich me committing to something for 90, uh, 90 days. <laughs> but I decided to go for it anyway. Um, I did, I, I do how much weight or inches I lost because I didn't measure because I was super disgusted with myself. Um, but I, after that was in what felt like the best shape of my life. I was definitely not my smallest. When I did my first program, I was 383 pounds, um, which was horrible. And that has turned now into my why I will never quit because I never want to be there again. Um, but you know, it just, it led me to where I am. And I did that program and I reached out to Ashley and I was like, you know, I just feel like called to share this, but I'm at that point because I had yo-yoed a little bit in the fall. Um, I was still over 350, So nobody's going to take me seriously. Nobody's going to, you know, care what I have to say. I'm going to be a laughing stock if I come off as a health and wellness coach. Um, and she politely told me that I was 
full of shit. <laughs> um, and that the worst thing that could happen was that I have extra accountability for my community, but, or for my, uh, journey, but you know, best case scenario, I help somebody, even just one person. And so I took a leap. Um, I worked really, really hard. I matched my full-time jobs paycheck in three weeks, which just unleashed, um, in my mind, the opportunity, um, this coaching opportunity has taught me to dream bigger. It has given me friends that treat me the way that I deserve to be treated. Um, and people that build me up and love on me and only want the best for me. They never expect perfection. I don't expect, expect, you know, that from myself anymore. And now I'm just a leader. If you've been around for a little bit, you saw that I got to go LA a few months after coaching. And then I just earned this, you know, cruise opportunity. I was there with Kayla and it was great. And it's just, it, it has really changed my life in such a way that to this day, like if even just one person benefits from me being vulnerable and talking about depression and talking about binge eating disorder and talking about, you know, like just, it's okay for your life to suck. You just have to put in the work to get better. You know, um, if one person can benefit from that, then I've done my job. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Okay, you're amazing. I can, yeah. yeah. We needed you. You had to stick around, babe. <laughs> Seriously. Kind of needed you. Crazy. Wow. The but most yeah. amazing stories. I just have to say, I've never heard of like either of your stories that in depth. And I was just like hanging on every word. And you guys are so inspiring. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Thank yeah, we, so us three, we were in California back in September and we really, we were just there for like 48 hours for the retreat and we really didn't get to like meet or officially like connect really. Brittany and I have been talking on the side and, um, but I agree, like Brittany said, this has brought some of, you know, my very best friends. Um, if you see me on social media, like you'll see me posting like, look at me and Brittany, we're talking. Look at that. <laughs> you know, and, and that's the thing. It's like, um, <laughs> I've learned that it's like, I don't have to be like so close with people that live nearby. I can virtually hang out with friends all, all day I want or all the time, you know? And so it's just like, it's such a cool, a cool thing that this community can bring you like so many amazing people in your life that you need it all like the whole time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I'm talking about Bernie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so. I mean, I have met Kayla and Emily both twice ever. And mm -hmm. they are some of the people I hold nearest and dearest to my heart. And I, I am an introvert. I have social anxiety that like literally keeps me from going to the store sometimes. Um, but you'd never know it because like, I just, I vibe with them. Like they are so my tribe. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Um, and like I said, like they, they only want the best from me. And uh, there's the community aspect of this is, unreal. And if there's anything that you can get from the story, it's that, um, you know, we, one thing that we all had in common in all of our stories, and though they're very different, we lead all very different lives, different parts of the country, um, is that it all, we would do it for free <laughs> that, that we got to hang out with each other. Um, and it's just, it's incredible. Yeah. Amazing. So well said. <laughs> Well, do you guys have any questions before we go? <laughs> we're going to talk more about like the nitty gritty tomorrow, but mm -hmm. if you have any questions now, we can chat a little bit. I know Emily's going to hop off in a couple minutes, which is mm -hmm. fine, but. So tomorrow, each of us will be going live in the Facebook group. Um, just we'll give you a heads up, probably about 30 minutes to an hour uh, before we are going live, just talking on a few different topics. Um, you know, we'll be talking on just some, some different things that are offered to you guys as coaches, some special things, um, how you earn income, because we know that's probably like what you're wondering about. Um, <laughs> cause Brittany talked about replacing or her, her checks and stuff. And, um, 
the growth is there with pay. Let me just tell you. And um, it's the potential. It's just amazing uh, what you can do with this business. But it is truly a direct reflection of lives um, that we've changed. And that's what makes me feel good about it. Um, Cause it's a lot like my, my personal corporate job. I work at a local credit union. I've been there for 11, over 11 years now, and we're big on people helping people there. And so this is just exactly what we do here. So, um, I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I would do this for free. Totally. Totally. A thousand percent. Um, and then, so what else are we going over? We're going over the, how to sign up, uh, how we make yeah. money and the kind of trainings that you guys get. Yeah. Um, we definitely all touched on our own objections. We'll post a little bit about that tomorrow. Yeah. And this group is a special group. Super special. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> we got more goodness coming for you. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are a special group. So, um, just hang in there a little longer, but, um, I guess that's really it. Unless any of you have questions. Yeah, this was um, recorded, so I'll go ahead and once we hop off of here, I'll put it straight on YouTube and put the link up. So if you hopped on in the middle um, or at the end, you'll have access to everything. Um, but thank you guys so much for tuning in. We, we really appreciate it so much. Uh, Seriously, thank you guys. This was the best. We yeah. can't wait to spend the day with you tomorrow. Thank you all. See you later. All right, perfect. We're going to hop off. Good night, you guys. Thank you again. Bye, guys. Bye.